Hello and welcome to Dialogue. I'm Yang Rui in Beijing. Shocking footage has emerged on social media and angered the Chinese public. In the video, a delivery man in Beijing was repeatedly slapped by a man for, accident- for accidentally scratching his vehicle. The young guy was left hurt without beating back or defending himself. The public strongly condemned the assailant and have called for justice and basic respect for those ordinary workers. But how should they safeguard their basic rights and interests? And what should the government do to protect the vulnerable groups? To discuss these and other questions, I'm happy to be joined in the studio by Professor David Moser from Beijing Normal University and Professor Tan Jimeng from Beijing Foreign Studies University. But before we get started, let's take a look at those. This video quickly went viral on social media. It shows a car owner repeatedly slapping and hurling curses at a young delivery guy after a minor car accident. Some onlookers are trying to intervene. Shunfeng Express later said the delivery man is one of their employees, and they had taken him to hospital for treatment. Suffering from soft tissue injuries, Korea Shafeng said he did not break any traffic rules, but the car owner beat him anyway. Xiaofeng said the car owner also threatened to lock his delivery vehicle unless he pay him immediately. He obeyed and paid the man 400 yuan to get out of trouble. After the video was posted on social media, Xiaofeng received an outpouring of support from Chinese netizens as well as his boss. Wang Wei, chairman of SF Express, voiced his anger in his personal account in WeChat. I, Wang Wei, announced to all friends, if I leave one stone unturned in this incident, I would not be qualified to be the chairman. Police have stepped in and further investigations are still underway. Gentlemen, what do you think of the public anger in the wake of this uh, media event? Well, to me, I think it's justified. I think it's a very, very outrageous video as I watch it. I feel kind of anger, angry, and I think uh, it's deplorable. It is something that I want to condemn at this very point. Uh, one thing that comes to my mind immediately is that this young man should be protected, and protected not just by his own company, but also by the larger community, the larger society, and maybe law. I mean, should be, in a sense, uh, used to protect his rights and interests at this point. Yeah, rule of law should be used to safeguard the rights and basic rights of these uh, delivery men. What do you think of uh, uh, measures that should have been taken to protect uh, these, what we call, disadvantaged social groups in the society at large? Well, I mean, the, the, the tragic or the unfortunate thing about this particular incident, as I was seeing it, is, is that it's all too common. I mean, I had a sense of déjà vu, if you know what that is. Mm-hmm. I've seen this many times, very similar behavior. Maybe not as egregious, or he slapped him many times, but I've seen you know, uh, car owners or bosses or something slap their employees. I think this, in this particular situation, there's not much the law could have done uh, in advance. And, there's, and, it's, it's all, and, and since they have no actual contractual relationship, this, this is more, that particular incident is more of a social problem. It's more of a problem of what the Chinese call sujir, which we're going to talk about. But, but David, you came here uh, for this discussion in due capacity, both as uh, someone who has lived in Beijing for a number of years, and as an American who comes from a very different culture, where automobiles are pretty common, and mm-hmm. you have started the, uh, what we call automobile culture a long time ago. What do you think of uh, the most likely response from uh, a similar event? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, in, the, in America, everyone owns a car. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, it's, there's no class difference. There might be some difference in the, in the quality or the expensiveness of the mm-hmm. car you drive, but, but everyone has a car. In China, in these situations, a lot of people who drive a car, especially a very you know, a high, high class car, there's a very different class difference. That it's not everyone can afford a car. And so uh, the difference is that in the US, there's sometimes fights, there's what, something we call road rage that yeah. we might talk about, but it's more of an equal thing with two people getting out. It's not this, this is a very but ugly David, situation, I'm class you are, difference. But, but I'm afraid, David, you are generalizing an emerging automobile culture, which is very young in our country at this moment. Sure. Uh, and 
I don't think, uh, sorry to say this, but I don't think uh, a Japanese made a car should be a symbol of social uh, status uh, in this case. But uh, in what appears to be a matter of road rage, what would be uh, a result on the outcome of this, uh, this bad in the city of the United States? Uh, I mean, where gun-related violence uh, proves uh, <laughs> rampant. There's no gun, absolutely. <laughs> Luckily, point, there was Greg. no gun here. No, no gun, Greg. Uh, but you're right. I mean, your question is quite uh, justified, I think. Um, uh, this is a young man that runs into a very poor, miserable situation. Uh, I mean, the driver is a rude and lewd person uh, that comes out from his car and thought that he was humiliated. Uh, but once again, this is a new car culture. China is so new on the four wheels. And owning a car means status. Owning a car means class. And owning a car meaning you perhaps higher above that person. So there's a kind of a, a deeply rooted sense of being, I am superior. And so I have the right to, to, to slap you, to curse you, and to do everything. So this is basically so something I deplore. I mean, you, you are just equal to that person. You're not supposed to Yeah, the that. driver was looking down on the delivery man. He's as a tall a man. Lower He's class. A but, but gentlemen, China is said to have entered into the middle class society where drivers of an automobile could be a well-educated middle class uh, member. Mm -hmm. And this, uh, this delivery man is supposed to be a migrant worker. So there, there is supposed to be a gap. Yep. Uh, between the education of the two different guys on the street. So what do you think of uh, the self-control of this delivery man? Uh, he deserves uh, a lot of uh, sympathy after this uh, video went viral on the internet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, according to news report, this man from SF uh, Sun Feng Express and uh, their orientation, the first orientation class is that they are educated not to fight back, not to curse back. You have to be polite, extremely polite, conditional is polite in a sense, for to your customer, to your client. And so in this case, the guy seems to be so very much kind of adhering to that very rule or something. And so he didn't fight back. And he was kind of abiding by the, the rules. The David, company. I suppose yeah. in a similar scenario in the United States, uh, drivers on both sides should be uh, polite. At the same time, a cop should be called in mm, uh, right. to help sell, settle the dispute. Right. In, in this case, where could we find the Chinese cop? Right. Well, that's a good question. Uh, I, I think the tendency, at least uh, in the U.S., in, unless there's something like road rage where some people are just mm -hmm. enraged, most of the time you get out of the car, mm -hmm. uh, you say, are you okay? And then the next thing is, here's is my the insurance. Person, it's the driver who matters the most, then the right. car itself. Right. Are you okay? Yeah. Are you hurt? Right. I mean, and this then the should next, be the first question. And then the next thing is, here's my insurance company. What's your insurance company? Right. Right. And then the, the, the number three is, let's get a cop here to look at the accident and record you it. You mean there wouldn't be any days. anger? But the, we have heard a lot of no, stories about the road anger. rage. No, no, there would be country. anger. There, there is often anger, yeah. Right. There's definitely, right. uh, and there's often, you know, in, in the U.S., road rage, people have guns and they sometimes shoot them right. on the freeway, right? So. Uh, I don't think this is a you know a, a purely a Chinese problem or a U.S. problem. People no. people on the road get angry at each other. The the difference here is the the, the other driver was driving a little three wheeled uh, delivery vehicle, right. and the other guy had a car. And if if you look at the, the behavior of the of the of the car driver, he wasn't hitting him or he wasn't just cursing him as you would an equal. He was slapping him like a little kid. Right, right. He was like, pat, pat. You know that shows it says who are you 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 little you know runt. It's, it's disgusting. But, but back in the 1990s when I was uh, trained and I attended some training programs for being a driver, mm -hmm. I didn't learn anything about how to behave after a road accident right. occurred. No. Um, now, don't you think it is high time for this part of the lesson to be added into the curriculum about uh, how to prepare you to be a driver on the road? Well, absolutely. I think it's high time that the Chinese drivers should be educated and educated to be polite driver, to be good behavior kind of driver. Do you think this uh, amounts to what we call the automobile culture, very much like the way in the UK where you have the uh, culture for pubs, for drinking and uh, networking in the pub, <coughs> where you, you act accordingly. But the, in China, you need to develop what we call the automobile culture. Uh, like uh, David said earlier, the first thing you do in this case is to produce your insurance number and just settle the dispute through the legal means. Yeah. Well, absolutely. I mean, the man, if he's a well-trained and well-educated driver, he should be stepping out of the car and perhaps go and say hello 
to the delivery man and see if he's injured because his vehicle is larger, right, and cause the harm. And in this, in this case, he should be the good person and coming out and take and basic take care of that young man instead of slapping him. I mean, he's a big guy. He must be kind of having in better financial situation. He shouldn't be doing that. David, uh, uh, you and me are both the drivers, I'm afraid, and I, I wonder. When I'm afraid. I agree with that. <laughs> I don't like to drive, but yes, go well, ahead. But, um, China used to be a kingdom of a bicycle. Yes. The United States is said to be a nation on the wheels. There is a sharp contrast, and it's perhaps not very fair to draw a parallel between these two countries with different cultures, so to speak. However, don't you think China is not ready to have an automobile culture? We are not trained, we are not prepared to mm -hmm. act accordingly. When you become a driver, you are supposed to be well-versed about uh, the insurance company and all that sort of uh, legal knowledge. So yeah. China is not ready yet. No. No. Well, yes, and also, you know, China is, is also has, is, is its law culture is relatively new as well. Yeah. Yeah. You know, China has, is still in the process of building a legal culture, and a legal culture includes uh, a consciousness on the part of the citizens of the, of the importance of law. And I think that takes many generations. It's not just having the legal system in place. And with traffic rules, you've yeah. seen Beijing, right. people ignore traffic rules at every intersection, right? right. So right. Even, though they, even though they probably have studied the traffic rules and they know the law, when you actually get in a crowded street, people ignore it. So I, I think it takes more than just the, the, the teaching. It takes, it takes a whole generation, a culture to develop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When people of this disadvantaged social group like the delivery men are in danger, they usually enjoy three kinds of protection. One is insurance, the other um, law, uh, a third might be the labor contract. Mm -hmm. So labor contract falls into the category of a, a rule of law. Mm -hmm. But I'm talking about what should be the immediate response from the employer of the SF company. Well, according, once again, according to news report, the company chairman seems to re respond very positively. I think he said, I need to protect my staff, otherwise I'm not supposed to be the chairman. And so that should be a right position that this company should take. And in this case, I think it's the company, is the employer standing out and try to protect the rights and interests and take care of this young man and perhaps taking him to the hospital and reimburse all the bills and coming back and deal with the man, with the driver who slaps the young man. So in this case, the company, even though I don't know if there is a labor contract signed between the company and the man, but then if he actually emerged and say, we will protect this young man, we will try to help this young man, and that's the right position. Oftentimes, Chinese companies who, do not, who are not willing to come out and protect its own staff because the lack of the leeways of labor laws, or perhaps they didn't sign the kind of labor contract. In this case, I think uh, Sun Feng did a good job in terms of protecting and extending that kind of uh, uh, protection towards this young man. Perhaps it's not too much to describe China as a country on the early stage of industrialization, mm -hmm. where you don't have a quite mature uh, protection by the trade unions. Right. I mean, trade mm -hmm. unions' role are supposed to be mm -hmm. is supposed to be protect the basic rights of the uh, employed. Uh, in, the, in this case, uh, don't you think education and the legal measures uh, trail behind? Uh, the fast development of e-commerce and the flourishing of e-commerce means uh, uh, legal matters, uh, regulations uh, should have been drafted early enough to protect the, uh, 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 those who are employed by the uh, e-commerce. In fact, at the end of last year, the Legal Affairs Office of the State Council issued a draft regulation on express delivery. Uh, it is now in the progress of soliciting opinions from the public. What's your view on the draft? What should have been written into the draft? Well, one thing is liability. Uh, if, uh, if, because there are a lot of these little cars uh, mm -hmm. all over Beijing, and they they're coming in and out of traffic, the, the, they need to be very clear about the liability. If if you run into a car, mm -hmm. a car runs into mm -hmm. you. What are your legal rights? What are the, what are the legal procedures? Uh, does the person who, who's driving? I guarantee you, the, the the young boy who was driving that you know that little three wheeled thing that hit didn't know his rights. Probably didn't have any idea what his liability was, if any. And I think that that's one thing that needs to be clear that people need to realize because there are going to be little accidents and you're going to hit people too. Oh, they did. Yeah, they did and once so before. yeah, so 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 they need to be aware. What's the law here? What, what is your next you know, responsibility? And I'm, and I'm sure that that's something that's still in the state. Yes, indeed, the protection of lives should be prioritized on the sure. agenda. 
of drafting regulations to protect the basic rights and dignity of the uh, uh, express delivery. You are watching dialogue with Teng Jimeng and David Moser. We are talking about what can be done to protect the safety of uh, express men and, of course, the emerging industry of uh, express delivery. We'll be back in a short while. Please stay with us. Welcome back, gentlemen. Um, my question before we took the break was about a, a draft that was in the progress of soliciting public opinions about how to enhance the legitimacy mm -hmm. of those uh, rules that may be used to protect uh, migrant workers and express delivery uh, people involved in the industry. Um, what do you think of the idea of uh, hosting, for example, or conducting public uh, policy hearings? Uh, very much like perhaps the congressional hearings that you often hold and this event is often televised to encourage the general public to put whatever uh, uh, policy formulation under scrutiny. This is something that we should learn from the West, don't you think so? Uh, well, absolutely. This is quite new and public hearing to solicit opinions from the general public is very, very new, I think. Um, but people like us, I mean, actually had uh, great knowledge about this public hearing either in the United States or in some Western countries. Congressional hearings in the, in the U.S. Congress has always been publicly available out there on the Internet. And I think we need to borrow that. I think public, the, the Chinese public in this country should, uh, in a sense, given wider channels to, in a sense, to participate in this very decision-making process. On the one hand, I think public hearing can, in a sense, intensify, can extend this very channel towards the people, perhaps not the elite people, but the people in the, I mean, across the board, I mean, in different spectrum of the society. But I'm afraid uh, uh, public opinions in my country, in China, mm -hmm. are seriously divided between whether we should rely on the elites to draft the regulations or we should have extensive policy consultation with the general public. I mean, taking the uh, forming of European Union as an example. It, it's largely designed by elites in Europe mm -hmm. instead of turning to the general public for their opinions. What do you think of uh, the uh, divisions in public opinion across the broad spectrum? Well, certainly uh, the, in a case like this, you do have to take into account uh, you know, different, uh, different strata of opinion. And for, this is a very good example of that sort of thing where you have different constituencies. For example, people who live in apartment complexes have a, con have a um, are concerned with with easy passage mm -hmm. that these 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 vehicles pile up and in, in, in entrances and it often makes it very hard to even get on the onto the sidewalk and to walk safely. In other cases, you have uh, uh, you know they inter actually interfere with the with the easy movement of cars coming in and out of the apartment complex. So so this is a matter of public safety, but it's also a matter of the kind of thing that the chengguan, you know, the, the municipal police right. have to deal with, which is things that just simply look bad. A lot of a lot of uh, of people who live in, in high-class uh, apartment Important complexes here. think this is ugly, it's, it looks horrible, all these things that the, their packages are put on the street, can't you do it somewhere else? So I think there's going to be compromises here and part of it is public safety, part of it is aesthetics and then so you're going to have different people who they want these things delivered to them but they also don't want it to be utter chaos. Yeah. So uh, the only way you can arrive at, at a mutual, mutually satisfactory situation is to at least poll all these different people mm -hmm. and say what would be optimal for you. A few weeks ago, uh, public anger exploded uh, after the authorities in Shenzhen decided to crack down on the use of uh, e-bikes and uh, mm -hmm. freed uh, tricycles, uh, uh, which claimed many lives uh, in what appeared to be a reputation of breaking traffic rules at random. Now, uh, public uh, debates started to rage across the whole country and uh, on the social media in particular, people were angry about the crackdown on the use of e-bikes and uh, uh, tricycles. So this drew a lot of uh, fire and controversy in this country. What do you think of the uh, impact? I think I'm also very much struck by this very polarization in terms of public opinion uh, towards this very confiscation or banning of these e-cars e and tricycles and that stuff. Uh, on one hand, I think the draconian measures taken by the Shenzhen municipal government is to be, in a sense, discussed. I think there's general lack of discussion and perhaps there's a public hearing to be held, I mean, held beforehand. I'm, I'm afraid, essentially, the uh, crux of the debate concerning a crackdown on the use of e-bikes and uh, express tricycles 
had been whether the, such practice should be banned through a uh, rule by decree or right. through a form of good governance. Right. I mean, good governance means you need to do <coughs> feasibility studies. You need yeah. to uh, have a notification period instead of uh, imposing ban overnight. I mean, that means uh, a lot of packages uh, would not be uh, uh, processed, and that will seriously hurt the interests of the consumers. Employers of uh, express industry would also be very yeah. upset in this case. Which, which is why I'm saying that there must be a public hearing that involves both the people being served and also the company who provide the services, like Shenfeng Express in Shenzhen. They must be consulted, they must be, in a sense, approached beforehand so that they can, in a sense, to see whether this is legitimate or justified. Now, otherwise, there could be a public revolt against. What I see right now is a public revolt against that very draconian measures. Well, the way I, the way I see it, if I can just weigh in here, because I live in Beijing mm -hmm. and I've and I've been to all the other, these other cities and I've seen this time and time again. These motorized bikes and also these little three-wheeled uh, pedicabs that are are like little mini ca taxi cabs, yeah, yeah. like know. city guerrilla forces, right? Yeah, right. The, pr the problem is, and I really sympathize with a lot of these drivers who are mostly migrant workers, mm -hmm, right, mm -hmm. is that the policy is totally unclear. They sometimes crack down on them and don't let them, you know, right. uh, go into, yeah. whenever there's a hot public holiday or some, some big event in the city, they suddenly are banned. And, and there's, there's no rhyme or reason, there's, there's no, uh, there's no uh, a sort of obvious clear policy decision ever made. They're banned for a while and then they come back again. The yeah, drivers I, I, of the pedicabs are said to be very nice, very polite. Yes. They didn't mm -hmm. uh, take to the street in protest against such a, a, a move by the authorities in Shenzhen, for example, in an organized way. Very much different from uh, what could happen in the West in, this, in a similar case. Well, but the problem is that they, they're, they're, they don't know, have any legal rights. They know they don't have any legal rights. That, so the, the problem is I would like to see from for, for their standpoint but also people like me who sometimes actually depend on these pedicabs uh -huh. to get somewhere mm -hmm. is that there's a clear uh, a legal right. statement right. about the, the legality and also what kind of traffic uh, what you know what kind of a car they or what kind of a vehicle they fall into the category because they ignore the traffic rules completely. Right. Exactly. It, I'm a driver. Right. Yeah. I, I was driven mad in many cases course, right. by the Abusive Eco. behavior of the pedicab drivers because right. they simply ignore the traffic regulations. The should be right across. Yeah, right? and yeah. I was scared. I was yeah, really yeah. scared. Right, right, um, right. So, uh, for example, according to the traffic administration of Shenzhen, one of the first tier cities in China, the e bike related traffic death toll accounted for up to a quarter of right. all road deaths in 2015. There you go. The mm -hmm. authorities have all full reason to take serious actions, but apart from expropriation, what other measures do you think the authorities should take or should have taken? to strengthen the management of e-bikes to make the roads safer. Well, We're talking about a, a good governance, of course. That's right. a good and governance. And media oversight. Right. Right. Media oversight. Absolutely. Not good governance. the government's right. conduct. The first thing you do is, is it has to make the decision, are these things legal or not? Right. Right. And if they're legal, let's not crack down on them. Let's regulate them. Right. Regulate and them. like give them, you know, ABC. Here's what you can do. Here's what you can't do. Here's the regulations for the, for the vehicle itself. Right. What right. kind of, you know, is, if it's electric, what kind of motor propels it? Just regulate it like we do in the West. Right, it, it, right. With, with, with a legal system, you say, all right, this is legal, but you have to follow these rules. After the video went viral online, the car driver in Beijing was mm -hmm. soon exposed uh, in what appeared to be the human flash search. search. Mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. I mean, this is barbaric in, 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 a way, in a sense. His personal information of the driver, such as his phone number and home address, were both made public, which has seriously affected the normal life of the family, of the driver. Now, what do you think of such? Uh, consequences of this nature. I mean, well, once again, also, ignor uh, yeah. unfair. For unfair the is ignorance. I mean, people who do this actually are ignorant of law. I mean, this is against the law. I mean, there are specific laws of the PRC against doing flash search uh, using the, 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 the But the oversight by the social media takes root where rule of law beats a retreat. Don't mm -hmm. you think this is uh, the embarrassment and catch-22 situation for the authorities? Right. The reason for the human flesh search engines is because people are angry because the law seems it seems so weak, is un unable to actually prosecute people like this. Right. So right. I, I, it, it goes. It all goes back to the uh, sort of uh, immature rule of law here. <laughs> if if the, if the guy who's slapping that delivery man is thinking, "Gee, I could be sued for this," right, right. he's not going to do it. Right. And if the if the guy who's getting slapped, the delivery guy, says, "Hey, I could sue this guy for doing it." 
then he's not going to stand for it. He's saying, hey, I'm going to call my lawyer right now and sue you. And I believe right. both of you have watched the movie of Mr. Six, La Pau, mm -hmm. uh, which was very popular. And a very touching moment at the beginning of the movie was the uh, similar thing. A guy, a poor guy of a Hu Tong was slapped by the Cheng Guan, the, the, the cop. Now, this immediately aroused the public anger. Mm -hmm. What do you think of, say, such a... Uh, common practice, uh, uh, of course, uh, abusive behavior by the cops whose role was supposed to maintain law and order, and yet their own behavior caused a lot of anger. Well, I don't know whether it is abuse of power. I'm surprised that the movie passed the censorship yeah, of the yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, administration. It's so weird. I mean, see, to me, frankly, I think that was a revolt in a very unjust fashion because, anyway, the guy is law enforcement, and you cannot fight back. You cannot fight law enforcement. That's against the law if you fight back Cheng Guan, I mean, in that case. And besides, that very food cart is, is, is placed over there against the law. I mean, that's why, I mean, see, they try to confiscate that, that food court. Uh, but then, of course, they use force at one point, and then there's a scratch. But anyway, I mean, this is basically a conflict uh, in terms of governing the city, a city increasingly kind of spreading out through, throughout in, which, in all directions, and also migrant populations who are so very much, uh, in a sense, ignorant of law, I mean, by doing whatever they want. And so in this case, I think that there is uh, still uh, the room for rule of law and also enforcement. I'm strongly against fighting law enforcement officers. If you fight them, what about, see, what about the basis of the rule of law? And in fact, Mr. Six, uh, the protagonist of the movie, argues that the policeman should not have done this and invites the cart driver to hit the policeman back before giving a small token slap to the policeman himself. <laughs> That's a joke. Uh, well, uh, public anger grows where um, law is absent. Uh, do you think this kind of a resentment by, the, uh, by Mr. Six is justifiable? And, uh, we should encourage the rebellious behavior. No, I don't think of so. The, uh, ordinary folks. In, in, you don't think in, so? No, I don't think so. I think in a society rule of law, I mean, you can never encourage this kind of anger. In, even, I mean, in, in the States or in Europe, I mean, you just don't encourage people Come on. to be. We, we uh, watched uh, many Hollywood movies uh, where uh, the rule of law is absent. I mean, you, sure. you saw the anger of ordinary folks. They use their own guns. I mean, to see their own rights. Films are films. They're fictitious. China is different, of course. We, mm -hmm. we are not a gun culture. Thank heavens, you're not a gun no, culture. No, no, no. <laughs> we have rivers of blood. If Otherwise, you many more government <laughs> officials who are totally corrupt would have been killed. soaked in blood. Huh? No. Yeah. Exactly. Well, thank you very much for your participation in this discussion about road rage and uh, how to establish a rule of law in protecting the disadvantaged social groups like uh, those involved in the express industry. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.